Hi everyone, in this video I'll show you the new uh, model template feature that's coming soon for HTX on color screen transmitters and I'll also show you the uh, templates that I made for uh, SOAR ETX uh, discus launch gliders. So you just go to select model and then you create a new model, create model and here you get a list of the different folders with templates. You also get the blank model as the default choice that would just create a blank model like it happens today on, on HTX. Um, you can save your own models as a template. If you do that, it would go in the personal template folder. Uh, and there will be a folder with wizard templates. Those are just simple models that will call the wizard Lua script uh, that we know from OpenTX. Uh, but let's go to SOAR ETX where my templates for sailplanes are located. Uh, so you just select the template you want to create. F3K is the standard F3K uh, discus launch glider. RE, that's rudder elevator and traditional has some more traditional mixes than my standard model where uh, mixes are just simple and additive. It has the same features but, uh, but some of the mixes are a little more straightforward. Uh, so let's just uh, create the standard F3K model. When you do that it shows up with the name F3K uh, and that's really all you need to do here to create a model. Then when you go back you can see that it has already loaded uh, widgets on the screens. Uh, the main screen will contain the timing and scorekeeping widget that you see here. And there's also another page with widgets for uh, model setup and configuration. Uh, I'm also going to add a widget for graphing log data but I'm still working on that one so that will come later. Um, but if we go back to the uh, scorekeeping widget, uh, you can use the roller to select the widget and then you press enter and it asks for full screen mode. Uh, these widgets also uh, support touch, like you can touch up here to minimize, you can double tap to open it. Uh, so if you have a touch transmitter like my RadioMaster TX16S here, uh, then you can use touch as well. But for this video I'm just going to show you uh, navigation using the buttons because then my fingers don't cover the screen and it also works on older Horus transmitters and others. Uh, so you use the roller uh, to select uh, the element. You can see there's a little yellow border around the selected element and then you press enter to open it. So let's open F3K tasks you get the usual, well actually first you, you have to select the menu and then press enter. Then you can see it turns green and you can select uh, the, um, the task on the menu. You press enter and it opens. For those of you who have used uh, SOAR OTX on the black and white transmitters running OpenTX 2.3, uh, you'll see the screen looks familiar. Uh, but basically you have a uh, quick relaunch that's uh, going to <clears throat> start the timer immediately when you uh, pull and release the uh, launch switch. Uh, if, it's, if quick relaunch is not on then you have to pull and release the switch to stop the timer, pull and release the switch again to start the timer. You got in the window it stops the flight timer when the window ends, it freezes it and then it records the score when you when you pull the launch switch. And then you have the start uh, start window timer. Uh, so the window timer starts either when you press this button or when you do the first launch. So <clears throat> the window timer is running, you pull and release the launch switch and the, um, and the uh, flight timer is running. Um, so that, that's really all there is to it. Um, this all looks familiar for those of you who have used my SOAR OTX templates. So uh, it will warn you about low battery uh, if, uh, 
if the battery voltage is below the threshold and this is also an extra feature if you haven't turned on your model and it reads zero volts on the battery sensor. Okay, let's uh, leave this one. If you use the arrow up, you go to the previous model. Uh, this is like a minimize button in Windows. It'll just minimize the widget and show you the widget screen. And when you open the widget again in full screen, you'll be back where you started. This arrow up will go to the previous menu. Since you have some scores, it'll ask you to save the scores. We don't want to do that here. Uh, so we can go up again. And we're at the base menu. You can see the scores are here on the base menu. And you can see there's a list of scores. You can scroll between it. You can also finger scroll if you have a touch screen. Uh, press uh, escape or return, I guess, to get back. Okay. Long press return will also get you back to, like the minimize button, to the main screen. So, on the next screen for model configuration, we have the configuration of outputs. Uh, it'll give you a warning just in case you have a model with a motor on it, that if you start moving channels around and do stuff, the motor could suddenly start. Not really relevant for a disk response glider. Uh, but you can see you can select the different channels here, and if you press enter, it will select that channel. Now the channel number is selected, so if you change the channel number, you actually move the channel. So if you press enter, it turns green. If you move elevator to channel 1, you can see I just swapped the elevator and rudder channel. There is that arrow that's showing if the channel is reversed or not. It's reversed now, it's not reversed now. And then the last one will set the uh, endpoints and the center point for the channel. If you press enter, you'll get this menu where you can choose what you want to, re uh, to set. So offset would just move all three points together, upper, lower and center point together. The range will widen or narrow the, the range between the upper and lower point. And then finally you can, you can adjust each of the points individually. So we'll just try offset here, and then you can use the roller or the finger to, to move the channel reins. Press enter. Okay. And then you go back to the X in the upper right corner, that'll close it out. Okay, the next one is, uh, let's go to switches next. So here you can select the switches that are used for your model. Uh, by default I use uh, switch F on the uh, left shoulder of the radio. I use that for the launch switch. If, you wanted, if you're left-handed you might want to move that to the switch A on the right hand shoulder. Uh, so you can also do that. Like this. And then we have the wing alignment. Oops, I think I got the wrong one here. Let's go back. Wing alignment, here we go. So for the wing alignment, you it, it's again similar to the old program and also a little different. But the idea is that you use the throttle stick to move between the five curve points and the flap runs on your model will also move so you can see where they are. And then you can use the sliders here on the left and the right side to adjust the points on the curves. As you can see at the bottom text here, uh, you should start with the endpoints first, say the upper endpoint and then the lower endpoint and then the center point, and finally you should do these points at plus minus 50%. This is because if I adjust an endpoint here, it's actually adjusting the output endpoint. Right. Whereas if I'm adjusting an intermediate point here, it's actually adjusting a point on the output curve. So, uh, so this 
So the plus minus 50% points don't affect other points, but the end points and the center point do affect other points. It's kind of a consequence of how it's built. Okay, and there's also a reset button. If you messed things up and you want to start over, you just hit the reset button. Then we have the next button is the center ailerons button. So this one will decide how much of the servo movement is allocated to aileron movement and how much is allocated to flap movement. If you allocate a lot for flap movement and only a little one movement, that means that your flap runs move upwards, right? Because then there's more space to move down and less space to move up for the aileron. So um, <clears throat> you use the slider here. You can see you can go all the way to here. That would mean that you have, you know, 100% up and down for aileron and the down is also flaps. So they're basically sharing it all, right? And you can move it all the way down here where only 20% of the total movement is aileron and the rest is allocated for flaps. So you can see the dark blue part of the circle here is aileron. The intermediate blue, that's both aileron and flaps. And the light blue part is only flaps movement. But you want to move your flap runs to the point of maximum reflex here. So that is as far up as you ever want your flap runs to be when you fly the model. Uh, for some models that would be slightly up compared to the trailing edge. Uh, for other models it's flush with the trailing edge. Uh, but you cannot move the flap runs any more up from this position uh, using the camber buttons. Okay, and finally we have the adjustment of mixes and battery. Uh, actually, so you got the usual mixes, aileron to rudder mix, aileron differential, brake to elevator compensation, snap flap. Uh, then you also have inputs here, so, so that's new compared to SOAR OTX, that you can adjust the amount of input you give to elevator and aileron. And those inputs are set by default so that global variable uh, will hold its own value for the different flight modes. So you can set the flight mode and then it will adjust it for the flight mode you're in. Uh, and that's also why you can see the flight mode here in the upper right corner. Uh, so you know, uh, for some of the other mixes, uh, they're set by default to use the same value as in as in flight mode zero in cruise mode, so that wouldn't change. You can change it under uh, global variables if you want and then it will work in this menu. There's also an exponential, uh, that's the same exponential value I use for elevator and aileron because I ran out of global variable. And finally there's the battery warning level, so that's when the, the radio will start uh, talking to you and warning you that the battery is getting low. So, that's all folks, uh, I hope uh, you find it useful and I will probably post a beta test version of the software very soon so you can try it out for yourself if you have an old model that you're willing to use as a test bed. Thanks.